What's up, everyone? Welcome to the channel. Listen, anyone that knows me and knows me well knows that I absolutely love sports. Pretty much any sport I'll sit and watch. I played sports growing up. It was a big part of my life. And as part of growing up athletically, I had wonderful coaches. Not only did they teach me the game, the fundamentals, but they also taught me life lessons, how to win properly, how to lose properly, how to practice and give your best things that have translated into my life and have helped me get to where I am today. And one of the athletes that I've long admired is Deion Sanders, who I followed as far back as when he was at Florida State. He is in the National Football League Hall of Fame, one of the greatest defenders to ever step on a football field. But now he's transitioned. He is now a head coach, formerly the head coach of Jackson State University, and now the head coach of the University of Colorado. One of the things that Coach Prime has been diligent about is documenting his journey on social media. And through that lens, I've been able to learn some very important leadership lessons that I've taken to heart and that I think would be valuable to you, which is why I'm doing this video. So the first lesson that I've learned is that you cannot lead without vision. You absolutely can't lead without vision because if no one's following you, then you're not leading. You're just going for a walk. And he has done a marvelous job of inspiring the young men that he coaches and even people that watch the videos that he's a part of because he's really good at painting a portrait. He's really good at inspiring people and showing them, look, this is where we're going. Follow me. I'm your coach. This is where we're going. And if you apply yourself, if you work hard, if you're diligent, if you're committed, responsible, if you have the right character, then there's no limit to how far you can go in this life. And while that isn't really, none of these lessons are really new to me, but sometimes you just need to be reminded of what's important. You need to be reminded of the things that you need to focus on in this life because there's so many distractions out there that will end up taking you off course if you're not paying attention. So it's a great reminder that, listen, if I want to lead an organization, if I want to lead my team here in my company, if you want to lead your organization, then you absolutely have to paint a picture because if not, then why would anyone follow you? The next leadership lesson I learned from Coach Prime is that enforcement and empathy go hand in hand. Now, listen, it's OK to have standards. It's OK to be firm. It's OK to be even rigid in some respects. But if you don't do so with empathy, showing that you care for people, showing that you're doing things that are in their best interests, then once again, you're going to lose people. And there are lots of people that have the enforcement part right, but they don't do so with empathy. They come across as dictators. They come across as you know, uncaring and just worried about the bottom line. And listen, I'm not saying the bottom line doesn't matter, but there's nothing more important than how you treat people and the way that he's able to communicate his standards, but also when those young men need, you know, somebody to listen to them and somebody to kind of put their arm around them and, and guide them and lead them and inspire them and help develop them. That's something that really he is masterful at and something that, you know, really caught my attention throughout not only his time at Jackson State coaching, but this transition he's also made to the University of Colorado. So it's important to understand that you need to take care of people first. You need to be empathetic. You need to understand their situation, understand where they're coming from. That doesn't mean you accept their excuses and let them always, you know, spin a tail and, you know, use the vicissitudes of life as a way to get out of the responsibilities they have. But you can be firm as well as empathetic. I think back to my time in the military, I had leaders that were firm that, well, let me say this. First of all, I had some pretty bad leaders. You know, there were some leaders that I had that were bad, but I also had some great ones. That's part and parcel of being part of any organization. Doesn't matter whether it's the military, if it's ministry, if it's corporate life, it doesn't matter what it is. You have some good ones and you have some not so good ones. And honestly, the ones that were toughest on me are the ones that I remember the most because, you know, a couple I can think of in particular, they were very empathetic. They made sure that they looked out for me as a person. And then that made me want to live up to the standard that they set. That made me want to be disciplined. That made me want to not let them down. That made me want to make them look good because I knew they cared about me as a person. So always remember that empathy goes hand in hand with enforcement. You can do both, and the great ones always do. The next leadership lesson I learned from Coach Prime is that your assignment is not contingent on what other people think. Please make sure you get that. That is so important. When Coach Prime decided to leave Jackson State University and go to Colorado, there were lots of opinions, very strong ones. 
Some people said, hey, this is a promotion. Go get it. Go dominate. Go represent. And others whined and cried and complained and said, oh, you're just using an HBCU, a historically black college and university, as a stepping stone to get to what you really want. And listen, there's nobody right. There's nobody wrong because people are entitled to their opinions. But one of the things that he said repeatedly is that, listen, when God tells me to go somewhere, that's my assignment. And I feel like that he called me and prepared me for this opportunity and wants me to accept this assignment. Now, listen, I can't say whether that's true or not. If he believes that, then I'm going to go with that. I am not going to question uh, what a man or a woman hears from God. That's their business. And I'm going to accept that at face value because he's a man of faith and I have no reason not to. Even if I had a reason not to, it's none of my business. And I don't understand why people don't see it the same way that, listen, you can't read that man's heart and you don't know what God told him. You don't know what God told her, whatever the situation is. So you just wish people well, and you really should be so busy focused on your assignment that you're not emotional and losing your mind over what God told someone else to do. There are going to be plenty of times when you have opportunities that you can accept. It could be a relationship. It could be a job. It could be a move. It could be anything. And people are going to have something to say about it. And to be honest with you, that was a, a major stronghold in my life. I was always worried about what other people think. You know, what, what does somebody think about this or that? Or are they going to be upset with me or, you know, whatever the case is. And it took me a very long time to get over that. But I am here to report to you right now that you watch this video that I am over it. I look back at how many times I worried about what other people thought. And a couple of things jumped to mind. Number one, people that I thought were thinking about the decision that I made really weren't because they were focused on their assignment. And those who were giving me a hard time in the grand scheme of things, their opinion didn't really matter. I have to stand on my own two feet. I have to go forth. I have to accept the challenge and do what I feel led to do, what I feel called to do. And regardless of what other people think, if God gave me an assignment, then I'm responsible and accountable to him for fulfilling that assignment. So their opinions and attitudes and everything else wouldn't cloud what God told him. There are plenty of examples in the Bible and in life of people who have all kinds of hecklers and most of those hecklers are people who really haven't done anything themselves. And you could not only miss out on an opportunity to be obedient to God, but often on the other side of obedience, there is a blessing. And you could miss out on a blessing that costs you, that costs your family, that costs your community, that costs future generations. And I'm a firm believer that we are the answer to somebody's prayer. So if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, then there's somebody who's praying and believing that is not going to benefit or they're going to have to pray longer or they just may not get what, you know, they're believing for because I didn't take action or it could be delayed. And I don't want to be an impediment to anybody's blessing. So that's something that really stands out to me and I hope stands out to you as well. Listen, didn't want to make this long, but, you know, it's just on my heart to kind of jump in and share this. And I hope that you take these lessons and apply them to your own life. But more importantly, whether it's an athlete that moves into coaching or is still involved in a sport, a musician, it doesn't matter who it is, you can learn life lessons from anybody. You can learn what to do, and you can also learn what not to do. So anyone that you interact with, there are things that you can extract from them that you can add to your life in terms of what's going to make it better, or if you do what they did, it's going to make it worse. So listen, thanks very much for tuning in. Please be sure to give this video a like. I'd really appreciate it. It really helps the algorithm. And consider subscribing, and I'll talk to you very soon. Thanks so much.